This conference will now be recorded. All right, good evening, everyone. 601, time to, for the Conservation Commission. Hope everybody had a good January. Now we're into the end of winter coming up. So good, good, good. Uh, lots of stuff has been happening over the town, but uh, we'll just keep this to a dull war tonight. Um, everybody is, uh, I think you got everybody is accounted for on this meeting, right, at this point? Okay. Yes, sir. If, any, if anybody does come on, uh, I'm not seeing the whole screen, so if anybody does come on, just call out uh, to let whoever's on that we don't know who's there to uh, tell us who they are. All right. Appreciate that. All right, so can we get the approval of the minutes for the January 11th, 2022 uh, commission meeting? Can I get a motion to accept? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Aye. And Joseph, uh, any more further discussion on the minutes? Hearing no further discussion, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. All right, thank you. All right, we have the report of the conservation superintendent. Um, Kelly, we, Kelly, we're going to just kind of go through this really quickly, or just if there's any questions, I'll let you go forward. But you no. Know. Okay. So I have a few quick updates on some of these items, but most of these topics that are listed on the agenda are kind of in progress, and there aren't any great milestones to talk about. Um, so I'll just run through them. Please interrupt me if you have a question, and then we'll go from there. Um, oh, Cassandra just joined us. Hi, Cassandra. Hello. Good evening. Um, just getting going on my report, I was just saying that um, I don't have many updates on many of these items, so if you do have a question, uh, please interject as I'm speaking. Um, so starting with Tree City USA, we applied already to that program, and we haven't heard back, so um, that's the applications out there. Uh, as far as I could tell, we did meet all the requirements, so we'll see how that goes. Um, any questions on Tree City USA? Nope, we beat that to death. <laughs> um, street tree plantings, uh, we did, I did last week just get an email from the Connecticut Urban Forestry Council with a memorandum of understanding for the grant to plant 100 trees. Um, that has not yet been executed yet, so we have not done anything on that front. Um, I have spoken with one of the state land foresters, um, who I'm also friends with, um, full disclosure, and um, and uh, her and, and potentially the state urban forestry coordinator will uh, likely be in attendance for our community meetings just to add more depth and breadth of knowledge on uh, both the traditional forestry side as well as urban forestry and arboriculture as well. Um, so, so kind of some grumblings getting some of those meetings starting to kind of get them together, but one, I'm waiting still till the MOU is signed um, until we really move forward. Any questions on street trees on that grant? Nope, okay. Um, waterfront access points. Uh, we did speak with the Harbor and Waterfront Management Commission and they had some comments and edits on our waterfront access guide. So our um, intern Megan is currently working on those edits. And then from there, um, I had a discussion with the mayor's office and they would like to see it go to economic development next. Um, they thought that this could be a really great uh, publication to share with folks. So um, I'm, and I haven't yet coordinated with Mary Dean and her crew, but we'll, we'll be getting there after we make the edits from uh, Harbor uh, Management Commission. Uh, most of the edits are putting, the, for example, putting things in order from north to south. Um, just so as you're going through it, uh, you can kind of tell where, uh, where you're going along the coast and then putting a map in set. Um, things like using those, you know, like on those trail guides, there's little like picnic table uh, symbols, yep. like putting those kind of symbols just to reduce words and things like that. Yep. Uh, so she's just tidying that stuff up and then we'll take it to Mary Dean and economic development. Um, so this, this project continues to grow beyond what we originally thought, which is really cool. Oh. That's a good thing. Yep. Yeah, good. definitely. Um, any other questions on that? No. Okay. Um, brownfields update. Most of our brownfields that are either in progress or nothing currently going on on them, but we do have an update on 11 Old South Avenue. That was uh, the former Kramer's junkyard. Uh, EPA has done their site markout, and I believe that it will be this Thursday. They will be uh, beginning actually uh, their soil and groundwater sampling. Um, so 
So that'll begin with uh, soil borings throughout the property, and then they'll install some groundwater monitoring wells, come back and uh, sample those. Greg, can you mute yourself? Sorry. <laughs> um, it's just a little distracting. Um, so things are moving forward with Wade's finally, which is very exciting. Not Wade's, excuse me, I misspoke. Um, Kramer's junkyard. Um, so hopefully within the next month or so, we'll have some results uh, from them on the soil and groundwater. Um, and then after that, that will be considered the phase two investigation. After that, they'll move on to phase three, and then they'll do some cleanup planning. Um, and it's my understanding that RDA is considering uh, mark, starting to market that property as well. Um, so, so hopefully it'll line up that we'll have a cleanup plan in place at the time that um, we identify a successful new uh, occupant there. Any questions on brownfields? Uh, just uh, they're, they're doing work now uh, off of uh, Fair Boulevard and they did knock down that uh, where the marker is, right? Well, that's where that we've been talking about. They did not the marker. The marker's no, there. They, you mean the Ben Franklin milestone? Yeah. So yeah, that whole so area has been, that's been remediated now? It has not been fully remediated. I just spoke with Christine Griffin of, on beautification about this because I understand that they, the, a white oak, it, it's intended to be a white oak to be planted in that area. But EPA did not finish the remediation. There's two areas that are near that marker that they need to come back to in the summer, unfortunately. Okay. I'm not entirely sure why they did, couldn't complete it at that at the time that they were actually in there. But I think it's best that, as much as it stinks, as if we could just wait a little bit longer before addressing that area. And then after we get the, the clear, all clear from EPA, then we do need to check with DOT on that, just because that is not town property. Oddly okay. Enough. <laughs> and that was where that was where a large stand of milkweed was, right? Is that the milkweed uh, stand? Was that the one was, was, was up that farther? Was a bit, yeah. Um, I don't believe, I don't recall there being milkweed there. That area was typically always mowed more regularly, yeah. but there was milkweed more toward uh, the Blue Sky Diner down that way, right. across right. like Big okay. James Galley over in that area. But that okay. did all get mowed because there is an area of Raymark Waste over there. And there is some private property that just got sold. Um, I I think that those apartments being planned somewhere over there. Um, I haven't seen anything. The Connor so. Willow, the Connor Willow and Ferry. Yeah, there's apartments being proposed there, but there's also apartments being proposed on Fair Boulevard in that area where the, the milkweed was mowed too. There's a piece of private property, um, but I haven't, it's very preliminary. I haven't seen anything yet. I've just heard grumblings. So. I think that's on the side of Blue Sky Diner. Okay. Yeah, it's on the, on the same side of Blue Sky. Yep, exactly. Okay. Um, all right, so yeah, Raymark's progressing as planned. Um, nothing to really report there. Okay. Um, again, we have our Raymark Community Action Group meetings, and now they're every other month. Um, you can go to stratfordct.gov slash Raymark with a capital R to get the latest information on that. Um, quail, way quail more information not, than I can summarize here. <laughs> What's that? Quail, quail, quail Street's now done, and they're going to they're going to replant that. Yep. Um, I just reviewed the planting plan this uh, last week. Um, they're going to be making some tweaks there. Going to be expanding some of the wetland plantings and then expanding some of the trees. Um, they also did have some excess boulders that the town's going to accept. They're going to place them alongside the road edge. Um, mm. and so it will also help to preclude folks from going in there while while those plants are establishing. Um, but yeah, they'll be looking to do that uh, once uh, probably springtime hits. So um, yeah, but the plan is for that to be restored as a woodland essentially. Um, we're not looking to develop that or anything. Okay. Uh, at this time, at least, <laughs> not that I'm aware of. Um, all right, so any other brownfields, framework, super fun questions that I could help with? No, okay. Um, what else? Inland Wellands Commission, um, not much going on here as far as big ticket items. I will say the uh, the Big Teakwood Estates subdivision has resubmitted for the February meeting. I have not yet reviewed their plans. That's on my list of uh, tasks for tomorrow. So I'll be reviewing that, um, and then hopefully we'll be we'll actually get them before the commission for a potential application acceptance. Um, but that's all I have on that. I haven't reviewed that, but those plans will be available on our website prior to the meeting as well, um, and I can share them with you if you'd like. I could share the link to this commission. That would be great. When do, when is the inland wetlands meeting, Kelly? Do you know offhand? Yep, it's the so whatever the third Wednesday is. What is that? The sixteenth 
of February at 7 p.m. in council chambers. 216. Okay. Just making a note here. Okay. Um, all right, moving on. Bruce Brook Watershed Base Plan. We're still working on the um, contract, unfortunately, for that um, because it is it's technically a federal pass through grant to deep and then to the town. So there's there's a it's a little bit more complicated than some of these other grants. So I'm still working on that. Um, any questions on Bruce Brook? Things aren't really going yet, so there's not much to report on. And then Audubon Salmar Stewards. We had. 30 high school students interested in 12 positions and they held the interviews uh, last week, the second and the fourth. Um, and those interviews were with HR and the folks at Audubon, they led those interviews. So I haven't heard anything on selections or anything like that, but we have a lot of interest, which was really neat to see. So, um, and then once again, we're going to have um, about plenty of volunteer opportunities in the spring. And once I learn of, of how that program is going to work, I will let you folks know. Cool. and. Uh... I, get, I don't know where we would have this on the agenda, but there is the uh, the money that we received for uh, uh, remediation, salt marsh remediation, uh, and uh, I, I saw a thing with the Audubon that they had, they had cut through and then expand, expanded the uh, drainage or, or the influx of, of, of water coming in for the so the, the uh, marsh should be a little more invigorated by by the uh, sound. Where exactly was that, Kelly? So that, I mean, I, I, I can get you the design plans, but that's more located, so that's part of the Great Meadows Marsh Restoration Project, which is what the um, these kids will be doing. They'll be, they'll be right. doing the planting. So that's more over like near the main entrance um, to McKinney. So there are, are the Great okay. Meadows unit, rather. The, you know, like off of Long Beach Boulevard, there's that parking lot where Joe yep. coordinated the yep. mural over there. Yep. 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 If, you go, if you go over there, it's a giant construction site, and there's soil piles all over the place. But, um, but part of that project was to restore tidal flow because uh, a lot of the that tidal flow had, um, because of the fill that was brought in over the years, um, had been restricted. So that should help with some mosquito populations, hopefully, um, among other things. So mm -hmm. they're making good progress over there, though. Yeah, because my uh, the CDC kids that are over at the zoo are also, I believe, are going to be helping with that planting. So hopefully they'll be working with the salt marsh stewards also. Pretty cool. Good, That's good, great. good, good stuff. I don't know if I just want to circle back. I think I might have skipped the open space grant update, and I just wanted to say that that all of our open space grants are are currently in motion, except for the 2021. We still haven't heard back from um, the gentleman who was facilitating that for his father. So, um, but otherwise, we are moving forward on our 2017 grant application for those beaver dam parcels. That's moving through the process, and so is the fresh pond. Um, Donation acquisition that's moving through the process as well, but no major milestones really. Yeah. So. Can't wait for you to tell us the fresh pond is, is a deal. That's going to be pretty neat. And that'll be neat too because um, council approved, was that in January or December? I don't remember when, but there's a small parcel of land, I want to say the tenth of an acre, maybe a, maybe a quarter of an acre, um, adjacent to the fresh pond property. Um, and that also connects to a right of way, which then connects to our Great Meadows Park. So um, we're making like a nice little uh, conservation potential corridor over there, which is going to be pretty neat. Okay. The uh, the sale that they just had on the uh, property, it looks like it's going to be another uh, storage facility. We don't have any issues with that, right? That's not something that is a, I think 775 or something like that. Lordship, 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 Lordship Boulevard. 975 FedEx. Yeah, it's right by FedEx, I guess. That that's all just yeah, there's, all. Yeah, there's the FedEx, and then there's um the um uh, there's like a parcel technically in front of FedEx, and that's um before and uh, before inland wetlands right now. Um, it'll be up for vote uh this this at this February meeting, um or it could go to public hearing, but it's technically a permit modification. So they're saying within all of their impervious, their quantified impervious cover from the original permit still, they're still using all the stormwater infrastructure that already exists. It's just kind of a little shell game of is the, is the impervious cover going to be a building or is it going to be a parking lot? Because they keep getting different tenants in there. So um, I don't see any issues with that project, okay. though. The other question while we're, while we're in Lund Launcher Boulevard and open space, there's that property that is uh, between, uh, if you're facing Dunkin' Donuts, uh, on Lordship Boulevard to the to the left on the same side. 
the railroad tracks kind of run along the old spur that runs along it. There's that very large, large property there. Do we, any yes. information on that at all? Do we have any? Yeah, that's um, and that's it's like a mold, a giant mold lawn essentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they, I believe that um, that's owned by Stratford Land Development, and they had they came before myself for a potential inland wetlands approval for a gas station on along the frontage that so they were just going to carve that off. But those wetlands are tidal over there, so I don't have yeah. we don't have jurisdiction. Um, but there is something else going in also to the right there's a parcel to smaller parcel to the right of that right um and, right and next get, to yeah right next to that parcel um so if you're looking north it's to the right um and i forgot what's going in there but there's another proposed development over there but again uh no jurisdiction for me uh mm -hmm. under right in the okay yeah. it was just a you know you stand there and look down that you know i was out there uh looking at the turkey that is running around on lordship boulevard mm -hmm. Because my life is not any more crazy than it usually is, and I just was walking around looking for the turkey, and I walked and just stood. And you know, so you drive by that all the time, and you don't really pay attention to it. But as I stood there and just looked at the length of it, and it goes mm -hmm. all the way base base to another wooded area at the end, I guess mm -hmm. just before the highway. It's it's pretty impressive piece of property. Uh, that's kind of just really cool. I just I it's going to be developed into something, but I you know I was sitting there going, wow, that could be something else i don't know what it could be something else <laughs> yeah that's that's one of stratford land develops the land development's largest holdings that they have that's not developed uh in that yeah. area so yeah um it's only yeah. a matter of time yeah it's a <laughs> i was like looking at kestrel habitat out there and all kinds of stuff but oh well uh mm -hmm. and there's one last question on, on it's not really open space but it's kind of in that genre uh do you have any uh, drove by the old garbage museum and what, do you have any idea what's going on with that? Who, do they, that's not open anymore. It's not it's currently open. There, there is something going on there, and I can't remember because I signed. I did have to sign off on that for uh, a P and Z. I have to go. I don't want to misspeak on what they're doing there, but I don't. I want to say that they're doing some sort of recycling of some sort, but I would have to look into that. I can get back to you. I know I'm on the other side they have the recycling center behind it, but then this, the actual school or the museum yeah, itself. The museum. Yeah, yeah. Th there is something that is going on there, but I don't okay. remember right. off the top of my head. It kind of, um, it but, kind of fits but, it, it. It kind of fits into the conservation genre here, and I just didn't know if there's anything that, that was going on there or anything we could be thinking about as we move forward. Just okay. something that's property. I'll look at your files, yeah, and I'll, I'll email you what I have. Cool. I'll know the whole group. Yep. All right. All right, Kelly's gone through her uh, report. Any other questions for Kelly on on her reports? If not, if not, we'll go on to ongoing items. I like the new title, ongoing items. You've, you've refreshed it. Um, Arbor Day coming up. Kelly, Arbor Day. Anything else? I thought, I thought that you guys were uh, going to discuss that. I, I'm I'm still working on oh. plans. Uh, okay. On what we're going to do for Arbor Day. Um, so it's likely going to be a tree tree planting effort in a park that needs the trees the most. Right. So. <laughs> uh, so. Let's leave that. Let's leave that. Okay. Yeah, so so we have we have just just going to keep that weekend going because our uh, Arbor Day on the 29th, April 30th is going to be the river cleanup, which is basically uh, is it clean that also is clean sweep right. Yeah, that's the green sweep and the river cleanup. Yep, both combined. Yep. So again, keep that date, keep that date going. For Halla Farm, basically, is still undergoing. Uh, on, we're still working on on something with Halla Farm. Um, Karen, anything on that, or Kel, or Sandra? Uh, can you hear me? I got started. Oh. Yeah. No, we can't okay. hear you. Kat. You oh, can't I hear me. On it. I didn't even email the guy and follow up with him. I thought you were you were okay. on Karen to be honest mm -hmm. with you, but he knows where to find me if he wants some help pruning. That's all I can really do at this point. Okay, yeah. so all right, so let's uh, Cassandra. Let's talk a little later about the pruning. Maybe we can, I'd love to be able to like bring some people that maybe you know, some of our gardeners that are at the zoo that may want to learn how to prune. Maybe we can just get a bunch of the guys over there and just do a you know because that's coming up pretty soon to start thinking about doing that, right? Anytime. Yeah. Today would have been a great day. <laughs> Today would have been a wonderful day. It was a beautiful day. Was a day. 
today. All right. Kite surfing in Long Beach, again, I think that's still under under uh, thinking about, right, Kelly? We really just got a new new thing. Yeah, let me, I just wanted to add um, that our recreation superintendent is uh, getting some new signage for Long Beach, Short Beach, and the seawall. And on and for Long Beach, on the, for this topic for kite surfing, it is going to say that that is going to be restricted to the eastern end of the beach. So, okay. and she's going to instruct her, I think I mentioned this last time, she's going to be instructing her lifeguards how to help us enforce that um, for the summer. But, um, and then for Short Beach, that's going to be restricted just to the off season. Good, that's perfect. All right, great. That's helpful. Um, so we're gonna see how that kind of goes, I guess, for this year. And, and the signage, Kelly, that's gonna go up there, Do you, are you gonna be able to take a look at it before it gets put together? Or you put it um, I've seen some of the content. I don't know like the construction materials or where it's going or anything like that. I just looked at the content. I just wonder if there's any if there's any room to add in more, uh, you know, something about the wildlife and keep the wild, you know, to something yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, the mayor's office did add something in just recently. She like for Long Beach, she added um, um, some information on how long the beach is and that it was some piping plover and leased her nesting habitat. So she was trying to. Um, her and Mike Downs were adding some information on um, some more. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to see. I'd like to see that and add some more more content on conservation okay. would be nice. Yeah. So if it's there already, but but if we get a chance to take a look at it, I'd love to love to. Okay. Not I, it, I'll see where it is in the process. I have um, I've okayed everything, so I'm not sure if it's already gone to print or anything. Okay. I'll, if it's not, I'll try and get that for you guys. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And our favorite topic. Everybody, that's why Joe was on the call. You know, he's waiting for the coastal rodent report. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got all the Joes. All the Joes are just waiting for the coastal rodent report. Um, it, uh, interesting, interesting enough, uh, Joe Kritschke did uh, send out an email to us on a pellet that he found at, at Long Beach West uh, that looks to be from maybe the snowy owl, uh, and with the, uh, the the skull intact with some teeth, which look like uh, from Norway rat. So it looks like uh, the snowy owl, at least that maybe the snowy owl, but at least some owl uh, is out there uh, going after the rat uh, rats that are living there. So interesting, an interesting conundrum, which is uh, we're now looking to figure out how we can help with uh, eradicating the rat problem. And uh, so if we eradicate the rats, then maybe there won't be any prey for the snowy owl to come in, which then We'll keep the snow owls from coming in, which then alleviates another problem. So I think maybe this the rats are the rat pro the rat program is getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we go into it, Kelly. It seems that everything we do gets bigger and bigger. Bigger and bigger and bigger, yeah. That's about um, everything. Yeah, so we are kind of at a point um where we do need to start getting some pricing and making some decisions on how we want to move forward with the with controlling these rodents. Um I think that the general consensus right now is maybe that maybe exploring the birth control option. I have sent all that data to USDA APHIS um, for them to review and get back to me on their thoughts on that, but it seems to be um, one of the better options right now. That uh, perhaps combined with two other options, um, trapping, of course. Um, I, I don't think we want to use any baiting or anything like that. Um, we all know why we don't want to use that. <laughs> um, but but one idea that did just recently come up in, a, in an email chain that a few of us are on is the idea of trying to improve habitat for other owl species or raptors um, that would enjoy consuming said coastal rodents. So um, that's a conversation that's sort of evolving with the folks at Audubon and Deep um, to see how what, what we could potentially do to help increase those populations. So, um, so any more to come on that? That could be a pretty fun project, I think, for this commission to work on. So, we'll see. I, I and I concur with that. I mean, it was a it was a little bit of like tongue in cheek, but uh, I think that would be a, a great thing to do some uh, raptor habitat uh, mm -hmm. restoration and maybe some nest boxes out there. Uh, I had mentioned that uh, to Kelly that we I used to take tours out to. Uh, to Pleasure Beach, and before they redid, you know, before the uh, beach was reopened, and they did a lot of work to get it reopened, we had a, a really strong population of barred owls, not barred, barn owls, which is which is one of the uh, 
highest region regions they've found around here. They come from Stratford, now, but not much farther north than Stratford. Uh, and we had a population of barn owls there. And I could go there at any given day and find pellets galore, uh, which all had rodent uh, uh, parts left in it. So, uh, but once the once the once people came in, the owls kind of departed. But I, I think that's really something we could look into. I would love to be able to to start see what we need to set up uh, because there are different species of owl. We're not just looking at snowy owls. We're looking at uh, long-eared owls would be down there. I know long-eared owls are found over at the uh, at the uh, uh, Audubon there, I've seen them now over there. So they are hunters, they're grassland hunters. Uh, and if we can get uh, kestrels and we get uh, some of those other other raptors going in, that'd be a very cool thing. So I think that's something we definitely want to look into. And on the other side of the coin, I believe the birth control, and that's, that's just looking at now, we we're talking to Audubon, but the birth control, uh, I think is going to be, and trapping maybe the two options. Trapping has got a problem with it because trapping, uh, as Kelly had said, uh, and and, and uh, we heard from uh, DP and we've heard from uh, other people is that if we do trapping then we have to hire somebody and they've got to go in basically every day to check the traps. We're not talking about, I don't believe we're talking about snap traps here, Kelly. I think we're talking about live traps. Mm -hmm. So if it's live trapping, uh, live traps have the tendency of not just catching the things that they were looking for. So somebody has to go there every day just to make sure that uh, that we're just catching rats, not any other uh animals that are living down there and then those animals that are caught in the rat trap i mean the caught li living traps would then be have to be dispatched so it's a it's a it's a process i i will also add that aphis did usda aphis they did also um so there is another option and that is um sharpshooting um and they do do that at the airport but i don't think that is an option for us i don't think we want to explore i i would probably tend to think no <laughs> no. <we're not>. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay, just see. Well, everybody gets a ghillie suit, and we all crawl on the beach with sniper. It's all professionals, yeah. okay? I, I can't. I have a pretty good with a. I'm pretty good with a blowgun. So if you want to do a blowgun, it'll be less quiet. It'll be a little quieter. Or, or and I can bring our bow and arrows. We can go out there with a bow and arrow. I I just think that would just be a nightmare in so many different ways. I'm thinking it sounds like a fun field trip. It does sound like a fun field trip, yeah. But. <laughs> All right, so let, why don't we put that aside? Uh, all right, so so there we are with coastal roads. Uh, I think uh, it, I think we got some good ideas, and at least there's some good. I I, I love the, I really 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 like the the native uh, way we can way at least we can cut the population down. And again, the same thing. Bring don't bring food out there. Again, with the amount of shell, I mean, I'm not sure what they're actually eating out there at this time of year. I'm mean, doing more seafood. Uh, but the amount of shells that are up there right now is, is insane, right? The uh, the uh, the moon slippers are just crazy, 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 crazy uh, in piles. We had talked about that at one point. I don't even uh, we'll, we'll bring it up in another meeting. What what there's the potential of what you could do with those moon, moon slippers? Um, all right, so that gets us. Any other question? Now, native planting list. Again, uh, I think that's an ongoing project. We're just going to continue working on that. Sandra, anything on that at all? Uh, me and Kelly have been going back and forth on a few things. I, I think we should try to create our own um, to where that we're going to like, you know, abide by it or whatever. I'm going to be honest. I'd like to finish it up and follow it up with a plot that we're going to end up doing in the fall. So right. really introduce those. So then there's at least a place where it's in a confined space for people to observe too. Yeah. I've been doing, I've been trying, if when I get something I see on online that I like, I've been put posting on our Facebook page on some native planting. So not necessarily Connecticut native plantings, but native plantings to North America. And uh, so at that point, at least we're, we're showing that we're, we're putting that native planting list together little, little by little and people are starting to think about it. Uh, actually, tonight at 7 o'clock, there's that uh, the vernal pool program they're doing in Virginia. Uh, that I put on Facebook today. And over 300 people looked at it. I'm not sure anybody's going to sign up for it, but it'd be kind of cool if they, at least they did. And we're starting to see a little bit more push on that, so it'd be kind of cool. Um, anything else on on uh, the ongoing items? I just wanted to add. Did you guys get a chance to watch that um, webinar on um, the Saltmarsh Sparrow that I sent? No, I didn't. Okay, well, I, I just highly encourage you guys to watch it. I really enjoyed it, and I thought it was pretty educational. So um, I watched it. It was great. It was awesome. I really liked yeah. it. Yeah. 
yeah good i'm glad someone watched <laughs> um they have they have it all up on youtube because i not only watched that they had another one about another species cool all right so all right new business my friends anything on new business uh, I'd, I'd like to take a moment and I guess ask my fellow Conservation Commission members if you guys are free Thursday, February 24th at 6 p.m. Uh, there's going to be a public hearing uh, in council chambers at Town Hall for the Longbrook trees that they're proposing to remove in order to build tennis courts. Um, so looking at the trees and looking at the land available uh it just i don't understand why they're cutting down the trees to put the tennis court there when there's an ample amount of open space uh that don't doesn't have established trees um so uh you know i don't know i'll say that me and kelly have observed them different times together separately assess them uh so i, I at least did that with like that leg work to make sure it's not like you know super bad or anything super great, but I mean, we do it all the time. We cut down trees because people want to build or add on and like, it's understandable when you do that, but it just doesn't make sense for that to happen in a public park where they could adjust it and put it somewhere else where there's other open space. It's just kind of blowing my mind. So um, you guys want to go, if you want to check out the trees, uh, I'm sure Kelly has a bunch of information. She could pop over an email, um, but uh, I, I'm going to go because I just think it's weird. I don't know why this other commission would have done that. And I know that someone else had to approve it besides just the people on that board, I would assume. So I don't, I, I, I'd just like to ask you guys again, that was a uh, 6 p.m. February 24th uh, down there in council chambers at town hall. Okay, that, uh, thank you, Cassandra. Again, this is this has been beaten up a lot. There is, uh, you know, yeah. there's some trees gonna be planted. The tree, you know, again, I, I've done, uh, Laura and I both walked, went down there to check it out also. Noticed yeah. that there was some chicken of the woods down there on the one of the oaks. That means that one oak probably is a little suspect. But again, <laughs> I mean, there's a whole there's a whole bunch of debatable uh, issues that we can talk about. This this kind of is in our not really in our purview too much, even though we want to save trees uh, because of the other commission's involvement in this. Uh, so I would say yes if, if you want to go dare and want to speak on it we love trees oak trees are great we like trees that uh, give out the uh, seeds to i mean give out things to for native nature i like to see a variety of trees because really we don't have a variety of trees down we just have oak trees and there's a ton of oak trees down there i'd love to see a variety of other trees that would be for other uh species but um again i i would i would welcome anybody who wants to again uh, her uh, sandra's invitation they want to go down and speak on this uh, from the commission. Uh, we're not going to, I don't want to come to a vote on the commission because again, I think this has been voted on by other groups. So as you go down to speak on this, uh, you're basically going to be speaking on behalf of yourself, not on yeah, behalf of the commission. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know, you guys know or ask you if you wanted to go or no. <laughs> I think what we're gonna and, and what do you think too because to know like what you've encountered and why for again I I'm not disagreeing with you on this and I and I I basically said the same thing that you said as looking at the property that's there why wasn't it why was one picked over the others uh, that I thought was a better pick myself but again I'm not on the commission I don't vote on that right <laughs> yeah you know, right. it's uh, somebody somebody that. Multiple multiple plans that we were looked at and were voted on, and I'm not sure. Again, I thought maybe it's above my pay grade to not know why. Kelly, I don't think that a, a plan was chosen, right? Like I saw three different options. No, yeah. Um, starting in June is when the the plans got voted on. So it, it got voted on by Longwood Park Commission, then Parks and Rec, and then it went to Town Council. Um, but but they did choose an orientation. Um, okay. For some reason, they, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Town Council didn't vote on a plan. We voted on the funding. Right. Yep. Yep. That is a good point of clarification. Um, but the the plan was voted on before it got to you guys, uh, before it got to Town Council. Um, but I do understand that uh, at I'm not sure if it was at Parks and Rec and Longwood Park Commission or at both. But I do understand that the three different uh, layouts are recirculating through those commissions. And I don't. I was not at those meetings, so I don't well, know details of that. So. 
Well, then maybe maybe again, there's some some thoughts on this now. And I, again, to me, and I'm not a planner, and I'm not a, a you know somebody who designs tennis courts, and I would I would have picked someplace different than what I was saw that was going to be picked. <laughs> of that whole space that's out there, uh, I would have I would have picked something different. But right. again, and that and that's that, exactly why we're having this hearing now is um, like, folks that that weren't involved in the in the beginning to have a, a say as well. So, um, yeah. All right. So meet at that uh, meet. We'll meet there. If any, again, I think we're both planning on going. Sandra's going to be there. Uh, we'll see you then. Okay. Anything else on new business? Any more discussion on that? Be there. Anything else? Hey, Joe. Yeah. Good evening, Go everyone. Go ahead, Joseph. Um, I'm I'm going to be there to and just reiterate what Cassandra was saying in that um, you know we we're trying to be a tree city. We're trying to get grants to plant trees, and um, uh, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be a tennis court or a pickle ball court, which is I guess it's going to be a dual use for the court. Um, um, those clay courts there haven't been used in years. Having played tournaments on those clay courts, uh, they're, a, they're a challenge to keep upgraded to a level of tournament play. Um, so, and so I would, wouldn't mind seeing them go. The, um, the popularity of tennis isn't what it used to be. So uh, it, there are plenty of other courts across this, the town where people can go, even if they remove the courts at short beach uh which nobody use anyway uh there are still courts at Benel, there are courts at flood there's i mean i wouldn't even mind them moving the courts at worcester uh but um uh i'll be there at the meeting and if you can indulge me and in, for 30 seconds i will just rattle off some of the things i just wanted to let you know about uh crash pond um i'm still working uh bridgeport to donate us their parcel of land around Crash Pond. There's a ordinance in Bridgeport that says they can't just give a parcel away, um, but uh, I'm thinking, you know, we could, I'll pay them a dollar for it. So um, uh, we're, we're still pursuing that. Um, Can you name it, uh, the Bridgeport still on Crash Pond? <laughs> yes, that's the little parcel there um, uh, in the back of, um, in the back of Dunkin' Donuts, I believe is, is no, it's on the, actually it's on the road. It's on it's access road, it's like a sliver. Yes, it's closer it. to the road. So um, I'm, I'm saying that they can see it in there, whatever. Since they changed the name of the airport to Bridgeport, I want <laughs> something in return. So uh, uh, secondly, um, uh, you know, Connecticut Audubon has reached out to me and asked for help with Corteva. Um, it seems like the uh, negotiations for the Stratford Point uh, parcel have come to a halt, and uh, I'm, I've huh. been asked to uh, to uh, intercede. So I will let you know how that goes. I, I don't think it's going to fall apart, but um, they're at a, a impasse over um, an impasse over, I guess, liability, um, meaning that uh, they feel that they've cleaned up the parcel. As much as they're going to clean it up, which, to their credit, you know, they they did what they said they were going to do, but there's still a piece in front of the lighthouse there that, um, you know, they might have to be forced to clean up, and they don't want to have this come back and bite them. And having walked that piece, um, it's the only it's the only piece in front of the lighthouse that has any beach grass on it. So I'm like, why are we going to even dig it up in the first place? I let's let it let it uh, put, keep put a it fence around it. Yes, defensive. you know, exactly. So uh, I will keep you updated with that. Um, the I've been in touch with a couple of um, um, entities, if lack of a better term. I've been talking with Kelly over the last couple of weeks, and um, Aquarion is interested in helping us with um, our Arbor Day and our Earth Day um, um, celebrations. Uh, in that uh, they would donate some funding for us to plant some trees. Uh, same thing with the Connecticut, let's see, Connecticut landscape. Um, Connecticut, anyway. Yeah, the yeah, guys, see, uh, uh, Connecticut, yeah. Our, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, we, yeah. Well, that's they're to yeah. donate some trees to Stratford for whatever we're going yes, to right. do. 
And then um, I got uh, Coca-Cola to sponsor our um, Housatonic River cleanup uh, okay. at the end of April. So they're going to come in with with people and product. And I had a visit up there and they couldn't, uh, uh, they were besides themselves and, and uh, unveiling their bottles made of 100% recycled plastic. So I said, well, okay. you know, I don't want any of the any other kind of uh, bottles down the Stratford down that day, except for the 100% recycled plastic ones. So um, to their credit, you know, over the years, they've gone from being uh, very obstructed, uh, obstructionistic, at the word, uh, <laughs> to word. Somewhat, like uh, um, uh, somewhat uh, cooperative on the whole recycling and um, stewardship front to the point where they didn't do a full court press when we passed the bottle the last year. Um, uh, they weren't happy, but they understood that uh, the time has come. So um, this is this is their effort to try to be a little bit more environmentally responsible. Um, we're working with Kelly on the Beaver Dam parcels. Um, hopefully we can get that closed some, sometime this year. Um, as I was talking to Kelly, we might lose the James Farm Road parcel, piece of that parcel, um, um, but we could always reapply for it. Uh, but that, that has been tied up in court for so many months slash years, I don't see it happening anytime soon unless, unless, um, unless um, what certain legal <laughs> certain legal uh, <laughs> things happen and, uh, and certain people are no longer here and and then then you know we could deal with that when it happens um, the um, garbage museum was I think a Norwalk company owns that and they were originally thinking of that being a sort of a transfer station for um, the expansion of the anaerobic digesters. In other words, uh, instead of building another one, they would they would get uh, uh, that location to be like a holding area or a staging area, and then they would truck everything up to Southington once once it got to a certain level. But I don't know what, what happened um, after that. Okay. Uh, and then so lastly, they would basically knock the they would knock the building down. That's there. The yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, they would need to in, in case that that can't be open air because people would yeah, complain yeah, yeah. about. All right. Rodents talk about rodents and, and you know uh, bugs and, yeah. and smell and the whole nine yards. Yeah. So yep, yep, yep. And then lastly, um, I got a call from um, former Mayor Harkins, uh, you know, and he's asking for this is on a separate thing for the zoo. So <laughs> for the hundredth anniversary, uh, we're gonna we're gonna put in a, a bond request for for the zoo. So right, thank, thank you, me. Joseph. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. And that's it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for, for your inter, interjection into the meeting. <laughs> I do uh, want to add on that note, I did neglect to mention um, Earth, Earth Day. Um, that's not something that I, I'm not sure that we've celebrated in the past, but I, I'm, we're open to suge suggestions. Um, I know most folks are doing cleanups then, but we still have our river cleanup at the end of the month. So um, if you have any creative ideas for uh, some sort of small celebration, um, this is a, a big month of celebrating for us, <laughs> so um, we still have, have Arbor Day to follow up on that and then the cleanup, so um, any ideas, feel free to email me. We could uh, spitball some, figure something out pretty quickly here. Right. Birthday would be a good thing to do something. All right. All right. Any other new, bu any other mu new business? I had something in my brain that I can't remember what it was, so I'll let it go for this month. Birthday. Zoo. wasn't no it was the um camera wasn't uh it was actually no it, again uh, i'll just mention this to you guys while we're on uh i got a call about the turkey that's living on lordship boulevard so i'm not sure if anybody else has been aware of this turkey that's been running around down there uh they want they wanted me to go pick it up and take it to the zoo i went and visited the turkey uh and and it's limping a little bit i don't see it being in a very bad shape and really, you, if there's an animal like that, you're not really supposed to mess around with it, even though it's living on Lordship Boulevard, literally in front of Diageo uh, there. Um, I told a woman that wants me to pick it up that I'm not going to chase a turkey around on Lordship Boulevard and watch it slam into a uh, tractor trailer truck, That there, and then that would be a very bad thing. 
for the doing. So if okay. anybody hears about this, if anybody hears about this, just we'll just we're just kind of. I told her if she just keep an eye on monitor for me. So that's what she's doing. I paid five dollars to see that. <laughs> I got. It. She didn't think it would fly. She said it's not doesn't fly. I said I'm sure it flies. So I walked over and flew. When I said, "Oh God, it's going to fall over," I fly right into Lordship Boulevard and get run over, and then that would be a bad thing. So yes. I'm so we sure I can, like ask Google, Greg, but like, so aren't the male turkeys? Wouldn't they be like territorial right now, just like honing down their space over winter? Like, is that what he's doing? Again, there, it's not near any. It's not near any woods over there. That's why I walked over, looked at that parcel. That goes straight out because I yeah, said maybe yeah. living living at the end there in that wooded area, which would per that whole flat area is perfect turkey habitat. Right. <laughs> Go out and and and, and, and that, that's where I think. So I, the woman called me and said, "No, turn around." She was on the phone. Turn around. I turned around and in front of the agio, they're feeding it in front of the agio, so it's sitting there pecking corn out in front of the agio's parking lot. That's and I'm like, "Why are you doing that? Why are you doing this?" Just, they say it goes over and eats donuts over at Dunkin' at the Dunkin' Donuts too. Matt said he sees people at the deli feeding them. The shell at the Shell Station. So that's Probably, why. Yeah, they're, they're everybody, everybody, everybody loves this turkey, and what they're going to do is it's going it, to one day they're going to find it in the middle. It's going to die from a heart attack from all the, the crap. <laughs> it's going to be so fat it can't move. Yeah. If you go along and look at the amount of the amount of animals that have been struck on uh, Burma Road, that yeah, have been, I caught Every day, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, this turkey is just going to be at some point every one. But I'm just letting you know, I'm trying to keep hands off on it. It's, it's a it's a wild bird. All right. Now that we've talked about turkeys, we've talked turkey. Let's. Uh, anybody have anything else to come up? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Anybody have a second? Aye. Okay. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. If we were having a meeting uh, in person, I'd have uh, I'd have hearts. Everybody get the hearts. Oh. Hearts. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, take care. How are you doing? You too. Have a good.